The other option which dominated science from the 19th century onwards is materialism, which says that matter is the only reality. This realm of spirit doesn't exist. It's not material, therefore it doesn't exist. Angels and God are therefore instantly abolished. So you have a kind of atheist worldview. And then the human mind is nothing but the activity of the brain. Now, of course, this assumption, the materialist assumption, is incredibly problematic because um, although matter is unconscious uh, on this view, uh, 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 we, uh, we should be unconscious, uh, but actually we're conscious. So how do you explain that? Right. And in the philosophy of mind, that's called the hard problem because no one has an adequate explanation for it. Um, they, some say that some philosophers say consciousness doesn't exist, uh, it's just folk psychology and, and illusion. Others say it's an epiphenomenon, it's like a shadow of the activity of the brain, but it doesn't do anything. Um, and others just simply say it's an illusion produced by the brain. Now, the trouble is that calling consciousness an illusion doesn't explain consciousness, it presupposes it, because illusion is a mode of consciousness. So this is deeply problematic, and philosophers of the mind go round and round in circles, most academic philosophers and materialists. They never conclude it, never solve it in their part. Some philosophers now today are suggesting that we've got to recognize there's some kind of mind or consciousness in, not just in human brains, but in all matter, even electrons and atoms have some kind of mental aspect to them. That's a philosophy called panpsychism, the, the idea of this psyche or mind in everything. And um, I think that's the only reasonable way forward. And that recognizes a kind of mental life, even in electrons. The philosopher Whitehead, Alfred North White, he was the first philosopher to recognize the importance of quantum physics in the 1920s. But because quantum physics shows that matter is not stuff, matter is a process, there's no such thing as instantaneous matter or matter that just continues forever, like hard little billiard balls. Instead, atoms and electrons are waves. And because they're waves, they're processes, and because they're processes, they take time. You can't have an instantaneous wave, wave at a point at an instant, because a wave takes time. So everything takes time, and is therefore in time, and therefore it has a future and a past pole. An electron has a future pole and a past pole. The future pole is mind-like, it's about possibilities. The past pole is when something's happened, one of these possibilities has happened, it becomes a fact then it's in the past. And our own minds are like that. Our minds, our conscious minds, are full of possibilities. We choose among possibilities. And possibilities are not physical, actual things. They're just possibilities. As soon as we make a decision among them and do it, then it becomes a measurable fact and it's now in the past. So the mental pole and the physical pole are poles in time, not in space. Um, anyway, these are some of the debates going on at the moment within uh, consciousness studies and philosophy of mind. And I think we've moved on from this old style materialism to something much, much more interesting. Indeed.